And welcome to tonight's episode of PCP, the Pagan Center Podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Amber. I'm here. Also joining us tonight are... <laughs> I'm Barrett. I'm Miles. I'm Adam. I'm Dave Karen from Ravencast. I'm Snooze. Miles, That's God. everybody. Oh, it is? Miles already went. Damn it! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight! <laughs> Tonight we are talking about UBS, unverified <laughs> personal noses, UPGs. But first, I just want to give an announcement. I want to give some uh, kudos out to the Open Hearth Foundation. They are awesome people trying to do an awesome thing to do uh, the closest thing we can get to a pagan lobbying group in D.C. Uh, Lamika did an episode uh, interviewing um, the uh, Lady Iris over at the Open Hearth Foundation about why you should care about the organization and why you, like me, should donate to this organization and we'll have a link to that in the show notes because, man, that's a long URL. Or just look, it up, look up uh, Open Hearth Foundation on lamika.libsyn.com. And we'll have more information about UBS after this message. You're listening to the Pagan Center Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest-running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, PaganCenteredPodcast.com. Okay, joking aside, what is a UPG? Unverified personal gnosis. Well, Snooze, you talk about it the most on this show, so you might as well be the one to define it. (laughs) <laughs> awesome cosmic power <laughs> oh lord uh usually people are trying to get me to shut up about it okay i don't know whether to love you or hit you um <laughs> upg unsubstantiated or unverifiable personal gnosis are the two that people usually use for the u and it basically means in a, an unprofessional unscholastic unacademic nutshell that it's something that you experience that is real, meaningful, and substantive to yourself, but you can't prove jack all of it to anybody else unless they maybe have something similar to compare it to. So the 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 value kind of the street value kind of comes and goes, and it's very it's entirely subjective, but it's the foundation for a lot of people's spiritual experiences if you if you want to call it you know just kind of loosely call it that is that good i think that's good i think Uh there's no cooking (laughs) i'm all out of cookies i'll send you some later though got rockest (laughs) they were eaten by the crickets my my only other commentary to that is that it, it kind of assumes that there is a uh that that two two other things that there is basically some kind of lore, some kind of uh, base text that everybody is working with, that, um, that there is some, some kind of uh, objective material that one is, you know, one is referring to. Typically, I've seen U- UPGs in Reconstructionist type of folks, mostly because the lore is so, such a central uh, issue and cause, and uh, UPGs are kind of seen as the uh, secondary uh, uh, opinions, if not outright redheaded step choice one. Um, the, the other thing I'd say is, is that uh, the, the other fun part is how, how does one get substantiated personal gnosis or verified personal gnosis, which we may, uh, I don't know if we want to hit that now or later. No, it flows with the conversation. I mean, we might as well hit everything. But that, that's an even more fun kind of concept of, well, okay, if you have these uh, personal uh, subjective kind of things, how do we move that to a uh, non-subjective point or a point where everybody agrees it with? And to that end, uh, okay, yeah, I guess it is further up. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the topics are just there to make sure we have stuff to talk about when we have post scurvy silence. <laughs> Sorry, jump the gun. Oh, you Sorry. think you're going to have trouble filling silence with my big mouth on here? This, this, is, this is my pet. This is my pet subject. This is my... I mean, how many... Okay, 
quick show of hands, even though I can't see you. How many people on here right now have been a victim of my UPG lab rat guinea pig test? One of them, at least. Doesn't matter which one. You subjected me to it. Me too. That was fun. Cool. Okay. It's, yeah. It, <laughs> I Apparently someone's up, calling just, in to comment on it. <laughs> just to add quickly on to something that, I don't know what um, David said just a second ago, and I do agree with him about a lot of that. Then there's people that the whole reason they even get into an alternative faith or a faith period, I mean, it happens to, you know, the Abrahamic religions too, is because they experience something that could be called a UPG, and they try to figure out, in, in trying to figure out what it means and where it goes and what kind of puzzle piece it is, they wind up exploring a belief system or a philosophy, et cetera, et cetera, so on, in trying to put it in some kind of context, which that's kind of what I want. I wound up doing that more than I wound up doing it from his way. I wound up working it backwards from the way that he's talking about. I, I, I think I think uh, David did bring up a, a very valid point with UPGs I had not previously considered, which is you do need that common reference point of some sort. Well, you need a jumping off point. How, how are you going to even... This is Sandy, by the way. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, how are you even going to explain to someone else where it is that you're coming from if you can't even give them a, a frame of reference? It takes a lot of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's That's one of the reasons why I started doing what I refer to as my UPG lab rat thing is because there's a lot of stuff that I've run across that I don't have a... I don't have a system to plug it into that it entirely fits all the time. And since I'm an appropriative, eclectic, mixing bimbo from hell, I wind up looking into things and saying, okay, what do we got here? How does this compare? I also like looking at patterns in systems that don't necessarily grow out of each other or aren't necessarily each other's godchildren just to see you know, what people's brains come up with. And I tend to look at that kind of thing. Sometimes, the really one of the only ways I've had to get a frame of reference on it has been to lab rat people with it in different belief systems to see what they come up with. And okay, it's messy. <laughs> that, that, see, that's so. To be quite honest, that's so far out of my frame of reference. And I wouldn't even know how to approach. I wouldn't even know how to approach getting to. A personal gnosis from that venue. Usually, and um, I think a lot of reconstructionists go the UPG the other way, which is, as, as Dave said, the the idea of you have a typically accepted concept, but then given your own personal <laughs> feelings, experience, research you tend to develop something that you know is outside of the norm. And so when in explaining how you came up to that point and where you got into it, you have to start with, well, here is what people mostly think. But I think this, and while I know it's unusual, it's not typical, maybe it's not even as founded in lore or research as it could or should be, but I feel this way and this is why, and this is my personal substantiation for why I believe that way, <laughs> it is more of the, the typical way I'm, I'm used to explaining things. Which is exactly why I want to make a lab rat out of you, because I like getting people that don't, that don't come at it from anything like a comparable angle the, or a comparable angle than what I do. Uh, please, 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 when we get off of this thing, remind me to send you the basic text class notes for the te class I teach, and I want to take your brain out and play with it for a little bit, if that's okay with you. <laughs> sure. Ask, ask, ask Anna. Now, let, wait a minute, let me just for the disclaimer, I, made, I got Joe to do it, and he emerged unscathed and mostly in one piece, just so, just in case it sounds scary. If Joe can be talked into doing it and not, you know, need to be, you know, beat, beat over the head and put in a closet somewhere, you're going to be fine. Was there also the day that Joe did the ritual that killed Osama bin Laden? <laughs> I think good. that might have been the day after. Okay, the day after. Okay, okay. I want, to say that weekend. <laughs> I want to say something about that. 
You say he was unscathed, but it's very difficult to find when when Joe is scathed. So don't <laughs> <laughs> be wrong about that. Well, I sense there are words I should be saying. I'm just not sure what they are. <laughs> Most of them end in you. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, if he's still upright and walking normally, I'm, you know, I'm free and clear. Personally, I would like it if you could be a little bit more specific as to how you develop what you would consider an unusual personal gnosis. If where you're coming from is so eclectic, <laughs> Where do you start your norm, and where do you move from there? Do well, you? Just for the heck of it, I want to. I don't want to hijack the whole thing just with what I personally do. So, uh, Dave, Dude, we really, got like three more hours, man. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just make sure. Well, I, I, personally, I try to, despite the fact that I was raised under a rock, I do try to be mannerly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Sandra, just for I'm sorry, what are we, Sandra, or did you give a nickname? Oh, Sandy is fine. Okay, Sandy's cool. Um, I will also warn you, too, or whatever, that that a decent percentage of recon people tend to want to bludgeon me to death with a baseball bat when I start talking about this. So the, the fact that it doesn't, it often does not jibe with what a lot of people that are aiming for a, a recon type thing find acceptable just for the j just for the you know the 411 you might want to get a bottle of Pepto-Bismol and have it around for uh, the next little see, bit see I, I kind of look at it this that that that's not what it should, that 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 part doesn't even phase me because everybody has to come to their own idea of belief and, and what works for them completely separate from what I find works for me and and that I have no you know, issue or, or concern about what what really piques my interest is it sounds to me like you have a broad spectrum of what is norm. So if you have a large swath of what is normative, how do you get to the part that's unusual? I try not to actually establish a norm at all because I feel like if I establish a norm, then that's going to color or limit or predispose anything that I'm looking at. I'm, I may, I've got specific UPG experiences, and just this might clarify something a little bit. Um, um, most of what I work through are based on working with what would be con what I call whites, uh, Lanvatier, Akami, uh, Nature Spirits, is, you know, a whole bunch of different names for them. Um, if you're coming from a heathen officer true type path or pattern or source or whatever, Lanvatier would probably be the closest, a, a good term to use. And most of them are based, since I mostly work with animals, they're based on non-human intelligences. So it, I'm, I'm kind of, at the same time that I have a really, really broad, wide out um, lack of norm, it is. Kind of, I am sometimes kind of pigeonholed, so it, I'm, I'm fun at cocktail parties. But uh, as long as you don't give me any, anything sharp, but it's. I've got it. I got UPGs <laughs> that are specific to a spirit or a white that I've worked with over a long period of time that might establish a, a norm range, but. As far as just actually going into it, I try to. I actually try to not have a norm because I don't want to having having a predisposed idea or expectation can completely totally food bar you up with some of the stuff that I'm doing. So I try not to do that. Okay. Hmm. Sounds Great. like a. Mm -hmm. no, I was just going to say. <laughs> Go ahead, your turn, David. Sorry. No, I was just going to say it so sounds like just kind of an animist kind of. Uh, kind of outlook could be yeah. um, when I when I teach the class I started off with this is not about any particular path and I actually tell people that their homework you know 
and I, you know, yeah, I give homework and freaking metaphysical classes. Their homework is to go home and figure out how what I'm doing fits into their personal, either their own path, their heritage, their tradition, um, whatever they're working with. How does it fit? Is there, you know, are there comparative parameters? What's different, what's not, that kind of thing. And if I can get them to report back to me and tell me what they figure out or what they try, then I keep notes on it and I add to my, my little treasure trove. So I may, you, you guys may get tricked into actually doing some homework, too, if you don't watch it really careful. So. <laughs> a great example of a non-religious UPG was on, and we saw um, recently on a TV show where some, and people were staying overnight at a haunted house. There was oh, yeah, room, yeah, that was there brilliant. Was, there was one room in the house that's supposed to be a exceedingly well haunted, mostly by a young girl who died in the room, they say. And so a ghost hunter um, spent um, um, played in the room overnight, and, and most people ran screaming by about 3 o'clock in the morning because they just couldn't handle it. This one girl felt really relaxed and loved and happy in the room with with the presence of the girl who had supposedly died there. Um, <coughs> um, the cat who lives in the house as well um, called up into her lap and began purring like mad. And so the ghost hunter made the assumption that the Pat was working as the avatar for the ghost to communicate back to the ghost hunter. I think that qualifies as a UPG because there's no verifiable laboratory reproducible effect to show that a ghost is communicating through a cat. But she was convinced that the girl was talking to her through the cat. And the person who was hosting this TV show, and we saw all of this, said, yes, I just said it looks like she's communicating to a ghost through a cat. Or if you're a skeptic, he said, she's, she's holding a picture of a dead girl and she's petting a cat. But the awareness of the spirit in the room manifesting through the cat who is laying on her chest and purring, I think that's an excellent example of a non-religious, unsubstantiated personal gnosis. You have to be a ghost hunter or a ghost spirit medium savvy kind of person to get what's happening there. Well, you, you could go even, even farther and, and just look at something completely mundane. Like, I happen to have a job where I do a lot of outreach to New York City. And a lot of the outreach that I do to New York City happen to start, I believe, with just one person. Now, unfortunately, given the situation that I'm in, I can't actually go to that person and ask them, did you or did you not talk to these other people, which snowballed into this big, bigger thing. My own personal gnosis about the matter, my own thought on the matter, is that that's what happened. You know, you, you get into a situation where you say, well, if I were to bet on something, this is, this is what my bet would be. And that's the whole concept of UPG to me. But that's also coming from a, a, a point of view that I'm comfortable with. You, you have a certain set of parameters, and you make your best guess given those parameters. But you know that they're your own personal viewpoint because it could be interpreted, as you said, by somebody else in a completely different manner. Oh, yeah. I mean, basically <laughs> it just boils down to belief. I mean, every time you do the UPG thing, you're always walking that crazy plank where you know, somebody can be like, oh, but you're crazy. And it's really easy to be skeptical about UPGs, but... People believe they're UPGs for a reason, and usually there's something to back it up, whether it's whatever or it's another person. 
if you really believe that when you scoop up a spoonful of alpha bits and the letters you have in your spoon are J-E-S-U-S, you might be absolutely convinced that (laughs) Jesus is talking to you through your breakfast cereal. Or it might be just completely random chance that those were the letters that were on top when you lifted your spoon. Exactly. Exactly what I was trying to say. You, you can, you never, if you can't get to a source that can completely 100% verify one thing, verify it, then that would be a personal gnosis. This is what the Large Hadron Collider is all about. They They want to substantiate the fact that, you know, all these different particles exist, and the only way to do it is to create this most likely scenario in which they could exist. And so, if you, one would one would say, if you wanted to verify a personal gnosis, maybe you need to recreate a situation in which those scenarios are most likely to occur, if you can, and get somebody else to be to be in on it and get their feedback as well. And, you know, am I am the sanity check kind of idea? Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I do when I refer to put to making lab rats of people. Is I'll sit them down with, some, you know, with um, the I call the object that a white or whatever uses as an interfa- a material interface point an anchor. And I'll sit, plunk them down in a corner if they're a willing victim and say, hey, okay, here, stare at this for a few minutes, write down what your impressions are and anything else you pick up or whatever, you know, and then tell me when you're done. And then I give them something, and I, I go comparative with that. Oh, yeah, as a uh, public service announcement, when Snooze <laughs> says willing victim, that is not a figure of speech. <laughs> and as public service announcement number two, for those playing along at home, when she's... <laughs> has the word white, she spells it in this context W-I-G-H-T, not W-H-I-T-E, in case anybody was misconstrued. Yeah, I had somebody that wasn't paying very good attention right. in one of the one of they the classes you, that I did. They thought you were being racist. Yeah, and I'm still trying to figure that out, but then it's, you know, I, I, context, I think people have learned to hear program their ears to hear keywords just like Google and it's not a good thing well as far as verifying personal gnosis uh, the, the classic one that I've always seen bandied about is uh, D- Diana Paxson's idea of uh, the, the names of Freya's cats uh, she basically came up in one of her books uh, that uh, their, their names are tree gold and bee gold and it works very well, and a number of people have picked that up and just assumed it was in the lore and gone forth and said on their own, uh, yeah, that seems pretty cool and seems pretty pretty likely. And I think that's extended to such a degree that a lot of people have just assumed it to be true, and therefore it's as, as close, as I think, as any concept is to pretty much verified that uh-huh. a number of people from a number of different walks of life have independently said yep this seems to be pretty you know on the on the nose my only problem with that kind of method is that people in general are Cheap. They, they easily accept things mm-hmm. even if they're a very skeptical person planting that i think it's this they they look for something and they're easier to grasp onto it, and that's that's my problem with that. So whereas yeah, a lot of people have said yeah yeah that's that's okay. It's still looking at the source that it's coming from, and people like to belong. So if you're in a not you as in you, but if you're in a large group of people and somebody says that, you know, they, these are the names of Freya's cats and 90% of the room agrees, chances are that you will agree too. It's a rare person that will stand up and say, no, no, I don't think that. <laughs> right. I mean, the, the opposite side of, uh, side of that argument is, okay, 
so Diana Paxson says this, and so yes, she is very well respected. But that doesn't, but that doesn't excuse you personally from questioning that assumption and making and doing your own research and taking the time to decide whether you want to embrace somebody else's personal gnosis. Yeah. And- that, that, I think that's that's it. It's also, I mean, you got to make your own decision if you are going to embrace somebody else's UPG. Uh, I know me and Amber bounce a lot of UPGs off each other. Mm-hmm. And we take more of the, less of the, these are the names, right? More of the, we take more of the, hmm, tell me more. And, and we just don't, we try to intentionally word questions in such a way that we don't lend to an answer. Or more yeah. often than not, we just sit and listen and shut up, and we might come up with a UPG and then just not <laughs> tell anyone and see if somebody else comes up with it. There yeah. you go. There you go. That's to me that that kind of hits and on the head, and, and and I agree with Amber that there are a lot of people that, I, at risk of sounding harsh, I'll refer. I'll say are either sheeple or lemmings on that kind of thing. They'll just they'll go along and. Oh no, that's okay. polite language here. Okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> I mean, My that's answer to that, I also, yeah, I agree with Sandy. One, two, three, wait for it. Do your homework. Okay, I said it. I got it out of the way. I won't say it anymore this episode. Um, the, uh, the other trick of it is the reason, you know, what you just said. The reason that I said it's messy is because you do kind of have to think about where your input is coming from. Um a couple of you guys are familiar with my story about the chick that did the class and was going into absolute throes of drama over this feeling this poor dead deer being murdered as the hunter's bullets rip through its body and she's holding the skull of a German shepherd that got hit by a car <laughs> with noticeable canines. <laughs> so, um, I've yes. that story there. Ever. Yeah, there are times when I'm really thankful to not really be an innately kind and courteous person because then I can make fun of her. <laughs> but that's like that's like the, the the primo best example you could ever have of exactly what you were just talking about. I think I wind up with a little bit of a lucky advantage sometimes in that since a lot of the things that I wind up communicating with or that seem to come up and get all in my business aren't human most of them are animal intelligences and concrete vo- verbal communication really doesn't mean jack to a lot of them so i wind up falling back a lot on things i smell things i taste tactile things i hear and i'm not i'm not as i'm not a horribly horribly visual person sometimes so i think i wind up just looking up and having an advantage there in that I'm I'm so used for looking for things that are a little bit a little bit less concrete than a word or you know a verbal communication that again I don't I don't just say boom this is such and such I'm like okay well I, I smelled muddy muddy water I tasted muddy water that's where I'm coming from as opposed to saying its name is Fred And like Dave was saying earlier, a lot of times we'll, and, and Snooze has done this too when she came down, the the best way I've found is to hand somebody something and go, what do you think of this? Thank you. Don't give them any inclination that it's positive or negative or that they should be feeling something spiritual. Just hand it to them and see what they think of it. Mm-hmm. When it and comes to... Go ahead, Dave. Well, Amber does a good job of mixing things up. Sometimes it'll be good, sometimes it'll be bad, sometimes it'll be nothing. And by the way, as a reference, another public service announcement. If Amber says, what do you think of this? He says, cool. What do you think of this? He says, so cool. Then she shows you something and says, what do you think of this? And you say, I have an, a, an aversion to that. She will probably make a necklace for you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <sighs> don't warn people like that, Joe. <laughs> yeah, we just said you know, don't give people any inclination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's why Amber rocks. 
<laughs> Sounds Cody. Good. Pet the coyote for me, by the way. I miss him. He has been with me over the past couple of days, so he will get scratches from you. Awesome. Well, when I talk about you know verification process of of you know a number of people, I, my thought process is not like ten or twenty or even fifty. I'm talking like you know hundreds, if not thousands, over long durations of time. This is to to verify something requires a a whole lot of proof and more than just yeah that seems cool from you know the, your your local folks. But it also depends, to be honest, more, more than anything else, on the the depths of of and and the, the the limits of what you're talking about. I mean, names of cats, eh, you know, potato, potato. If you're talking about, well, you know, a bald balder's alive or dead, you know, that's got huge ramifications, and I don't trust anybody on that, besides, well, perhaps balder. <laughs> <laughs> Who just happens to be Scrooge's cat? Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's another me- that's more messy. Messy is a good word, and um, where I kind of come from on that, I actually like keeping it small because for the what you for uh, for what you just quoted, I like looking at patterns in things. Like okay, like you just said, if for the past five thousand years. People have had the feeling that making ritual offerings into a bog or a body of water is their way of passing something meaningful on to the spirit world. And you've got gaps like of 500 years when it didn't happen and it came back and it's happening again. That makes me think that this is a UPG experience lending itself to people's interpretation or interaction with spirit at the same time. Even, I'm always leery of what I refer to as telling a god that it has to have its name tag and its uniform on before it can clock in for work. And I see people that use UPGs as a a jumping off board or diving board for more understanding. And I see people that use UPGs and the substantiation of as a way of being exclusive or kind of even controlling. And that's, um, that, that's kind of the, the heavier end of the spectrum, and it doesn't always go exactly like that. But given the choice, when it's, com- when it's coming to things that are large and spanning several cultures or civilizations or several millennia, I honestly would rather sit back and say, I don't know when it comes to other people and stick with what I have found for myself than try to make any type of definitive or determinative statement. And I think that's part of the reason why I call myself, I say I'm eclectic as bugger all. And one of the reasons why that when people say they want a one or two word definition of what spiritual path I am, I just say, screw y'all, I'm a snooze. I, I think there is a certain value to keeping the group small, especially if it's like snooze and she gets lots of people that don't know each other and don't communicate with each other, and it's something novel she's introducing everyone to, to say, hey, feel this. Um, because you can, you, people are more apt to independent thought. There's a lot less, there's basically no lending itself to group think there unless you're all in a room feeling the same thing. But at the same time, I, I, I want to go off the devil's advocate side of the spectrum, and, you know, there's lots of, like, let, let's talk about the 9-11 truthers. I mean, that could be classified as a UPG. It's like, oh, that building didn't burn right for me. You know? It's like, well, there's lots of people that think that, and it's unverifiable. There a, yeah, there was a second shooter on the grassy knoll. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like once you start getting into the larger groups of people, you wind up with the, you go from UPG to conspiracy theory. It seems. <laughs> well, that yeah. more than anything else is a question of, of evidence, and there are some people who, no matter what you show them, have their beliefs, and mm-hmm. they will be more than happy to share it with the universe, and you know, everyone, everything else be be damned. If enough people believe that a thing is real. Does that make that thing real? Is the only substantiation that thing has is mass belief? See, I'm selfish, and I would say, 
Well, I don't, uh, I don't care how many people believe in something that can be real to them as, as much as I, uh, as, you know, as much as anything else, but it doesn't mean anything to me until it's real to me. And that's all that matters. I know it sounds kind of selfish, but. No, it's honest. That's no, I actually, I actually think that's being mindful of the fact that not everything has to be meaningful to everyone and not everything has to be a philosophy forming or a spiritual forming experience for everybody, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's invalid or has no worth. I, I don't think that's actually being selfish as much as I think it's being practical and, you know, kind of, you know, fair-minded. I think it's also an indication that, you know, someone is very comfortable in their beliefs and they're not looking for validation. Well, right, true. and, and the, the, other, the other side of the, the coin is, is true, too. If somebody comes to me with a UPG, I'm going to think about it, but I don't feel like it's up to me to give validation to somebody else's point of view, nor if I'm talking to somebody else about a UPG that I have, do I necessarily need or want validation from them. Sometimes it's, it's more about just sharing this idea that's in your head. I'll be honest with there you. you go. If, I, if I come to you with an UPG, please help me shoot it full of holes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's he told what me that and it didn't work. <laughs> Well, and a good community and a, a good, you know, folks around you, that's what they should do. They should be reality testing points of view because that's how we deepen our knowledge and spirituality. That's part of the do your homework is helping well, people, <laughs> make, you know, make, you know, verif- the verification process is running that through the mill and attacking it. Well, the laugh test, right? Do you t- if you talk about something and you bring up something that you really believe in, if people laugh, then you've probably got to go back and check what it is that you're thinking. Like, Not really. I mean, if you look at some of the most awesome inventions in history, people laughed at them. Right. People but, as a whole are pretty stupid. Right. But there's a certain amount of stick to and, and going back and, and really understanding your point of view because if people are laughing, then you need to have this this uh, this idea down you need to know what it is that you believe i also I, have to i'm sorry go ahead I, I don't think that you can have with a personal gnosis i don't think that you can have a weak point of view you should have an accepting and uh a, and an informed point of view like you said i want somebody to shoot things full of bullet holes when i when i talk about it well that's part of being informed but at the same time, you can't present what it is that you're thinking clearly if you're not really solidly understanding what it is that you believe in the first place. And Dave, cut, Dave got to it before I did in a chat room, even though I was stealing his line anyway. Go for it. But it's, it's, it's one I love. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Yeah, precisely. For reason, and as the case may be. Now... I can't go there. I mean, I've, I've already got Dave once. There's been another low blow. I can't pull on 86. Someone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, got, oh, let yeah. me try to do my best doctor commercial voice. Laughable UPGs may include claiming you cure headaches with anime characters. <laughs> Gore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that's and that that again that's you know the, that's the messiness clause. That's the messiness clause clicking in because you. Can't have, what the heck did that come from? <laughs> if I had to guess, from Snooze's computer to Miles, Snooze, you're using the speakers, aren't you? Was yeah, but we're we're sitting in the same place that we've been sitting since we got started. We got started. Just now, he hasn't oh, moved either. Go to separate rooms. Hey, but somebody locked us in the basement here. <laughs> is there a door between you and is it closed? It was a minute ago, and it can be again. Be again. <laughs> Skype. Is retarded schizophrenic. I think the door. I think someone pushed the door open and Miles hadn't realized it. But okay, now we're good. And this yes. microphone is Skype. very, very perceptive. Uh, Skype likes to mess with people. It really does. 
Well, no, that's just me being in Slack and not realizing that the confounded door had popped open. Bang. Okay, somebody can smack me around later. Oh, and as a, another public service announcement, if we interview you, please don't be chewing bubblegum. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's been doing post-production. Who <laughs> <laughs> like chewing bubblegum? They were subtle about it. I give them that. Not mentioning okay. any names, but... Uh, it's like, you know... I, I keep hearing a smacking sound every time before you speak. It's quiet, but it's there. Well, make a name. No. <laughs> the person The person was a good interview, and we're going to leave it at that. I don't even remember what episode we have in a cute ass an interview. <laughs> I'm making funny that. noises when my allergies are bugging me, so if I start doing it or something, just, you know, somebody like tell me, hey, stupid, cut it out. Okay. I wouldn't call you stupid. Oh, I do all the time. It takes the pressure off. No, you're too crazy to be stupid. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll alternate. <laughs> don't, get, don't, make, don't make it too complicated. Okay, on the topic of UPGs. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, who gets UPGs? Do some people get, get them more than others? Sounds like a disease now. Well, there's some people in the in the PHA, which that's my short term for pagan heathen alternative spirituality. I'm lazy. Uh, they yeah, it, it can get treated like a disease. There's some there's some people in the pagan community, PHA, whatever, that just uttering the word UPG will get all the horrors of any hell in any mythology dumped on your head. For being a gullible, fluffy bunny idiot. So it, and yet, these are the same people. Whereas, if it isn't written in a book, it obviously can't be true. But if you were to write it in a book, it would be true. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, there's a fine, moderate uh, point. Uh, a moderate point between the, you know, it can't be true and it must be true. I certainly see plenty of plenty of folks who say, "Well, the gods told me this." Therefore, it, it's true. It's like, no, doesn't quite work that way. Yeah, because all those GOP candidates can't possibly all be God's chosen one. I'm sorry, but I'm waiting for the cage match. <laughs> I'm waiting for the cage match. Sorry, political statement. My bad. <laughs> they all had no, UPGs. Bad possum. Bad possum. <laughs> they all had UPGs. They all just by chance had the same UPG, and they all believe that they are the sole inheritors of that UPG. They all also fall into that uh, category Dave was talking about a few minutes ago about the same type of people that will tell you they can cure headaches by waving a sailor moon wand at you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you believe laughter is the best medicine, it is possible <laughs> that waving that sailor moon wand will cause you to laugh and Maybe generate enough good vibes, endorphins, and all that fun stuff that you temporarily forget about your headaches. So, <laughs> from you mentioning that, you, you you've certainly got a, a vein throbbing the, in my forehead and starting a headache on me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, just like playing let me, devil's let me, let me advocate. Wha- <laughs> let me just whack you with this magical girl stick, and and it'll knock you unconscious, and you won't feel your headache anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, a little gratuitous violence never hurt anybody. Uh, well, okay. I also have the firm belief that sometimes the universe just likes having fun with people. <laughs> yeah. Keep that in mind I when you get your that. UPGs. <laughs> well, here's my personal favorite saying about intuition. Side subject, close enough. Intuition is not ne- your intuition is not necessarily for your benefit. Very. Nor is it necessarily evidence or proof of anything. Hmm. Take it or leave it as it may be. Well, I I get people constantly asking me because of I, I do save work, which is uh, Norse divin, uh, spiritual work, basically, um, and it's not very common. It's becoming more common, but it's not very common. And I've been doing it for a very long time, so. I constantly get people asking me, well, why do you do, how did you decide on the things that you decided? How do you do it the way that you do it? Why? 
And I had to ask them, well, it has more to do with my own personal experiences outside of heathenry than anything else on a certain level. And then there's only a very small amount of the reasons why I do certain things that can be taken from anything with any valid base or substantiation. And there's a group of people who go, oh, but that's, you know, who, who totally sign on right then and there. And then there's another group of people who, that's not, that's, that is clearly not okay and that's clearly not good enough. And for me, it's whatever works for you. And you can, you can, if it makes you more comfortable to call it something other than safe work, then, then go and do that. There are certainly instances where I've met people who I wish they wouldn't say that they were, they were also true or heathen because what they're doing, while it has some variation, isn't what I would call that. So that, that gnosis just in general is, is a difficult thing to handle. Just like if enough people write it well, it must be true and vice versa. Well, this is how Diana Paxson found herself in the enviable, enviable position of having named a God's familiars when there isn't, we don't have that knowledge. We, there's nothing anywhere. So... Anybody mind if I attack an invisible elephant in a room? Go for okay. it. Oh, it. Don't beat up the elephant. It might be right. a Klingon ship. Oh, that's okay then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... I'm pretty sure most everybody here has had a personal gnosis. And I'm going to... I need a volunteer. Hello. Volunteer. Alrighty, Barrett. What called you to your... to be a heathen? What called me to be a heathen? Yeah. I mean, how did you know it was for you? I respected the gods more than any other path, essentially. <laughs> that wasn't part of my... That wasn't one of my gnosis. I just respected them more. I mean, it, it's... It's still a bit of a revelation. I mean, it's... Why should you respect them more than others? I mean, was it something you read? Something you felt? More felt, I guess. Not sure well, I call that a UPG as much as... You know, a, a, a preference kind of. Yeah, that's not really a UPG. I I was probably not the right person to volunteer. Miles, let me, <laughs> let me bounce this off of Barrett just a second and see if this if, if it clarifies or adds anything to what he's saying. If well, like what you're talking about would be the difference between, okay. There are deities or avatars or other figures that I read about and I say, damn, I like that. I admire that. I respect that. You rock. But, uh, and that, that might be true, but it do, it's not the same as me coming in the living room and walking past my altar and having the UPG experience that the old man and the Dagda are have sort of turned the back part of my altar into their own little bar room and are sitting there drinking and making fun of everybody and making bets on when the fight's going to start. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. How would that compare when you're talking about that? what kind of brought you to it is that you respected those deities more than everybody else? How would that compare to the way you're framing what you're talking about? Or is that too vague? Um, well, okay. One of my main UPGs, it's a fairly common one among pagans, not so common among, uh, uh, well, I don't even know. <laughs> but uh, that's all of the different, uh, uh, what's the word? All the different groups of gods, the the Norse gods and the Greek gods and the Egyptian gods. I think they're all out there in the tribes or families or whatever you want to call it. So I think they're all you can you can follow any of them. Everyone has merit. I I have 
I have Norse background in my bloodlines, their family, I respect them. That's <laughs> that's kind of what brought me to the Norse. I respect the way they care. That's just where I go with it. Hmm. <laughs> okay. As we are forward, Miles is echo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I can, I can see that. Like, I have, I have a lot of UPGs about um, Hella. She's, I, I happen to have a, a, a feel a very close to find out more about her and a drive to find out more about her and to, to work with her where most heathens wouldn't at all and it, it might be looked upon by some as being a very negative thing and so uh, I have a lot of my own personal ideas and concepts about her that I, I can't base it anything other than my own sentiment and feeling and the time and effort that I've put into finding out as much as I can about her and the lore and other people who w- work with her and and that sort of thing. And to me, that's the basis of it, uh, more the basis of a UPG than anything else, is, that, is that, that same idea of you have this feeling and there's, there's no way that you can really solidly you know prove out where it is that where it is that this idea begins and ends outside of your own head Mm -hmm. but then you wind up i'm sorry go ahead if i can ask you a question sandy on your upgs about hella have you ever had one that that you felt strongly about but but went glaringly against what's in the lore, like directly against. Um, I know. I, I don't say that I, I. I can't say that I have one that would be like glaringly against the lore, but I certainly have these concepts about her relationship with Odin and her relationship with the runes and her relationship with the Norns or Vernandian Skald that are not typical, that are that are way outside what would be considered the the heathen box, or at least, uh, from my experience. I think it would be worth tossing in there that you're you're also coming from something where we do have a a lot of recorded experience and take on things more so than we do on most of the other pre-Christian religions and or pre you know pre-Roman takeover so however you want to phrase that I blame them a lot um, just because it's fun to blame the Romans but um, it's you you've actually got a written record of a couple of thousand years of other people's UPGs that everybody kind of looked at and said, hey, yeah, just like you and Barrett were talking about a minute ago, did you experience something similar to this? And you can say yes or no. You've kind of got that to to go with. At the same time, we kind of, I think it's a good thing to remember that we there's so much we don't have. And for all we know, there could have been a thousand years there where people were experiencing a certain thing and it was real for them that just burned up in a monastery somewhere and we'll never hear anything about it. It's one of the reasons why I like to kind of play it loose and say I don't know a lot. Well, well true. And I, there, there, are two, there are two things that, that can be said. First of all, I want to comment that that's why where you're coming from fascinates me so much. Because... There, there is no, there, there is no baseline for where you're coming from, and as you said, you, you try very hard not to have that, and 
the the other side of that is, and the frustrating thing for me as a heathen is, we have we do have a lot of stuff, but then it also makes those gaps and those holes where you know that there were things. It's just glaringly obvious that they've been lost. So frustrating, and there are so many heathen scholars, air quotes, that have for years been working on trying to to fill in those gaps. And to me, it's all best guess. So all of it is a big block of taken with a big block of salt, as far as, far as I'm concerned. Yeah, because you're looking at a time period that. Documental, the documentable portion of it goes back at least Bronze Age, right? Yeah. Yes, and that's that's the you know the way we even know about that is like you know the type of thing I was mentioning before. They they know that people were depositing um, offerings or you know burning things or building hinges or whatever you want to plug into that equation at least back that far Neolithic for some of it. Um, I like going back to the, the the bog or water offerings thing a lot because it to me it's one of the best examples. You'll have a locate you'll have a, a geographical location where you may have con- almost continuous or regular settlement for several thousand years, give or take a few ice ages and or an ice age, however you want to do it. And you'll see where for five hundred years, a thousand years this landscape plane was in use on a regular basis for something that looks continuous and then it stops and there's a layer where there's no activity and then you get another layer again where there might have been activity for another 500 years and then it stops and that type of thing. Um, and, And as you say, there are gaps there. So I think really you're kind of looking at it from best of both worlds in that you do have documentable things to compare to but at the same time you're saying okay I know that this is what I know but here's what I don't know instead of just trying instead of demanding that people just stick to what they do know well well, true and, and it's that demand that that rigorous dogma right that, that we're really talking about because in the absence of that dogma, there is UPJ. And that whole deity name tag uniform clock in thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are definitely points where things get even more confusing. Because, um, well, because it's not confusing enough. But, <laughs> I mean, for example, um, the, uh, the the book uh, El- Elves, Whites, and Trolls by uh, Kvaldov Gunderson, I think. You know? Uh, he he basically did a uh, a geographical uh, sociological review of well elves whites and trolls of different land spirits and basically compared uh, Anglo Saxon and Britain and uh, d- and different what different folks from different parts of Europe thought about different uh, uh, different uh, land white kind of kind of entities. And the upshot was that you really can't tell unless it's in front of you and you know what cultural background you're working with. So, because some, you know, if you're dealing with a a German land white, milk is is a good thing. But if you are dealing with a different country's land white, then in fact that may in fact be be an insult. And, well... So what does that mean for the modern heathen and pagan, and what you know what what's going on there? Well, good luck with that. I have a question as well about UPGs and regional perception of divinity. This might be a, a bit rambling. Let me try to make some sense of where these thoughts are going. Um, the Norse culture has a lot more snow as of where they live than, say, Honolulu. So there's more Norse um, influences and more Norse gods who have some kind of effect on or influenced by or relation to the weather of the region. 
inversely, gods in Honolulu or South America or somewhere else have have um, aspects of faith or focus on things that are more important to that region or that region's people. I've heard some people say that the fact that the gods of the Greeks are based on and reflect the needs of the Greek people and the gods of the Chinese reflect the needs and so on of, of the Chinese people, these these point, they say, to the non-affirmation of pagan deity because obviously they are focused by the needs of the people, so the gods are made by the people, not the other way around. Um, well, let's... Hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm only halfway there. Um, <clears throat> I think. So, so, in this context, I think the UPGs, if for... 100 people in a region of Norway all have similar gods and similar regional cultural experiences that they may well have similarly flavored UPGs because they'll all be influenced by the same forces around them. Um, which means that their reasoning or their awareness of these is influenced, of course, by where they live. Um, if a person living in Denmark had a sudden realization, awareness, vision, something that some weird volcano artist is talking to her about don't touch the rocks, everyone else might think she's crazy, but if she did research and found out about Pele, then she would be having a divine moment from a completely different culture. Does that qualify as a UPG? I got uh, a question and answer in response. Good. Uh, the, the easy answer is, I, I know in Iceland, they're pretty animistic to, to the point where, yes, most rocks, volcanoes, everything does have its own kind of spirit. Oh, sure, uh, you build you build roads around this particular thing because the the land vitier there don't want you to disturb this rock, you know? So, sure. Uh, sure, it's, well, it's similarities of respect regardless of region or culture. Iceland's right. good for that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah, okay. uh, Iceland has a, a ton of wild areas that are, that are still quite, well... Wild and, un and untamed. Yeah, I, I'm sorry for sidetrack for for sidetracking you there. Go go on. But but the second the, the second answer is even even much more complicated than that because how how do people worship the gods from five thousand miles away and uh, you know a thousand years ago in say oh, I don't know Australia where in fact the year is flipped. And Yule's in in June, and the answer is they make it work. They they, they come up with they, they change the pattern around and adapt that to uh, the the local conditions because they are tied to the local land. And I think that's as modern neo pagan something that we kind of have to do. We have to adapt those old ways from that point and bring it uh, to the, the the modern day with relevance. If I could go off Miles' point for a little bit, um, there was a time when I was visited by, I just knew it as an entity, and she was not used to what I was looking at, but when I did research, and it took me several years to find her, it was Nebetet from the Egyptian mythology, and I had never... As much as I was familiar with Egyptian, I had never known of a lady that was black skin, black wings, black everything. It wasn't there, and I had, inter I had interacted with her for quite a long time before I actually learned more about her. And it was, you know, when I learned more about her, it was, oh, well, this makes sense now. I understand this now. So 
from from that point, I can say that, y- yeah, that's kind of a Ute PG because it's not something I knew of. It's not something that I had a whole lot of experience with. I mean, this was, you know, back when I was in high school, and but it was still there. It was still a very real experience, and it was only uh, encouraged whenever I, I found research about it. Well... Going back to a slightly earlier topic, pardon about this, but, uh, and this is on the topic of uh, deities and what deities are doing. Sometimes when you show up to a party, you do what needs to be done, not what you want to do. If you're showing up. I think this all goes back to researching your UPGs. I mean,. Just because you have some sort of spiritual, you know, experience or something you cannot explain does not mean you shouldn't pursue it and research it and take that unverified personal notices into something that goes into the verified column. Just by doing research. Not Mm -hmm. saying it's all going to be like that because that's certainly not the case, but sometimes (laughs) sometimes it is. I don't know, and I, I don't know how you make something that to, is your own unverifiable gnosis into something verified and consider it verified. Like when when do you when do you reach that point? Well, is this that tipping point of enough people agree with you, or is it never? Office starters take uh, <laughs> notes. Keep a journal and all of the fun stuff. Because, and I'm not I'm not saying publish it for publish it. But if you're looking at the uh, future generations, say hypothetically Adam, both Dave's and Barrett are all having UPGs about relatively comparable to same stuff. And they all take notes, and 200 years from now, they find our journals. Yeah, but at that point, they'll just consider it like it's some weird religion that we were all part of and never told anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back at square one where it's written in a book. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. I think Snooze is right that it's it's both. Because you can't... If you feel strongly about something, then yes, of course you have to question. You have to question, is this something I'm experiencing within, without? Where is it coming from? Why am I, you know, on the border of schizophrenia here? Or what's going (laughs) on? But at the same time, if everybody you ask says, man, you're, you're way out there, you're nuts, that does not mean that it's any less... Like, there's a lot of pagans that don't deal with the the things that, you know, Dave and I have talked about or Scurvy and I have talked about, and, you know, they won't agree, and I'm cool with that. I don't care, <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's, it's very real, and there's been enough of people to where I've brought up vague things, and they've filled in the rest of the blanks to where I know it's not just me. That's enough for me. The rest of the world, I don't care. All things in moderation, including moderation. Yes. <laughs> I definitely do think there, there's a difference between personal experience and expecting a, a, a I guess, a, a level of UPG kind of thing. I mean, I've done meditations and, you know, and, and gotten, you know, messages from the gods, but I don't really consider that a UPG kind of kind of deal. I mean, for all, for all I know, that was, you know, my, my own... Uh, you know, it ego and super ego talking to me, <laughs> and don't really expect that that is a translatable spiritual religious experience. Right, but there are some people that do. There, there are some people that say, you know, well, I'm I'm married to a god, and and so I I know best about what this god's likes and dislikes are, what their favorite color is, that they like long walks on the beach and pancakes on Thursday. <laughs> you know, like, 
And oh. some people are stupid. That well, works out. Let's, that let's, works. Let's, 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 let's go with it. Let's go with this. Let's go with this a little bit, okay? And I, I believe in playing devil's advocate, so I'm going to set it in my mind that maybe that is true. Now, if this is true, what else would I expect to see? I'd expect other people to maybe have the same revelation. Do I see that? Well, more importantly, I would expect such a person who is married to a god to fulfill demigod-like material, that of being of such uh, character and, uh, you know, uh, su such an overwhelming personality where they would walk into the room and I would instantly fall over from, uh, you know, fr from, from feeling just their very presence. Because okay, they're married I'll, 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 and not just from their stink. I'll buy that, but I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a troubleshooter at heart and profession, so sometimes it's a matter of saying, okay, well, if this is true, then is something else I'm looking for that can maybe verify. And if I don't find it, I don't actually consider that a bad thing. I say, okay, well, Maybe this isn't true. And I like doing this insane things. I think Why? that's actually smart. Mm -hmm. Maybe 5% of the time it <laughs> is a fun intellectual exercise, brings up a little bit of fun conversation, and it's forgotten about 10 minutes later. I certainly I'm do believe sorry. that that the gods uh, can and occasionally do walk around in Midgard, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're Stupid people, and, and <laughs> more, more importantly, that they're you know so, some people are are you know uber special snowflakes. <laughs> Thank well. you. <laughs> I got to toss this in on that. The really what you were just saying a second ago, David, about uh, to me the the where you draw the line is. Somebody says, and yes, I, I've experienced someone explaining to me, quote unquote, that they were a god spouse. And my response was, and this matters to me, why? To me, the, 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 the crux of the whole deal or the final argument is, if they say, it doesn't have to matter to you, I just figured I told you because you thought you might find it interesting. We're good to go. When they try, when, when you try, asserting your own UPGs onto someone else and telling them that they must not only you know validate you but accept that your UPGs might even outweigh everyone else's you know not not your personal stuff but this person says I have this UPG of being such and such or whatever and in spite of what your personal UPGs may be yours are invalidated compared to mine that's when the red flag should go up the siren should go off and you should look at this person and go okay you a fool that to me is the that, that that's the that's where you cross the line from UPG into something that becomes in the ballpark and a close relative of a cult type thing. Ding 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 ding. And I'm yep. I'm very very leery of that sort of thing because I've run into some people that are, as far as I'm concerned, are not only kind of dim or kind of dodgy about it. They're to me they're actually mentally and spiritually and emotionally dangerous because. Of mate, when you when you start telling someone else that they can't trust their own spirit, their own gut, and their own walk with the gods, and that they have to bow to yours, then you run into the same type of you know fundamentalist extremism that is infecting a large number of the world's religions right now and making people blow each other up. Well, true, yeah. and you and I think you and that's you an oversimplification. Right yeah, and I think you hit it on the the head exactly when you. We're talking about the the idea of these cult leader like personalities. When you get into the position of looking for those people who are in need of direction, and then telling them that they can't trust their own intuition, or they shouldn't learn on their own, study on their own, and come up with their own ideas, 
then you're getting into that you're, you're getting into that that cult leader mentality where you're you're basically looking for people who are going to blindly follow your own thoughts on on things right or wrong without any critical thought or substantiation on their own and that's where the acceptance of somebody else's UPG can become really dangerous yeah and I'm, I'm s- sorry go ahead I mean, I um, have dealt with uh, a couple people where you need me to teach you. You don't. You don't know anything because I am. I am enlightened. I've walked with the spirits, and I know. I know you think you know what you're doing, but you know you're being really misled. And if you would just listen to me, and I can show you how to attain or achieve or you know insert great spiritual wisdom here, or you know, oh, you're doing so well, but this is wrong and this is wrong, and I understand how you've gotten there, but I'm right and you're not. But if you would listen to me, and there, you know, there are people you should stay away from because it's, you know, like like you guys are talking about, you can't follow your gut instinct. I can follow mine because I'm better than you. And you should really just trust me because you're just below me. Well, here's a soft rule of thumb that I've found, and I'm going to use the word intuition because it's a word I'm comfortable with, and if anybody don't particularly like it, well, I won't say, I won't complete that sentence because I get beeped out anyway, but if you're receiving an intuition or a gnosis or whatever that is of vital importance, normally you're going to have enough time to research it anyway. Well, and you you should, just because the how can I put this? Okay. I honestly believe that there are points in my life where a god or goddess has has really formed a connection. But like Dave said earlier, that doesn't mean that I'm just even going to believe that at face value because sometimes regardless of whether you believe that wholeheartedly or not, it doesn't necessarily have your best interest at heart. They're... It's something completely unknowable, right? They're, uh, or at least to me, they are on a certain level. It's like a, a two-year-old trying to divine the, you know, what mom and dad do at work all day. They do, They have no frame of reference and no ability to discern whether something is positive or negative or, or what direction it's going in. You've got such a small finite frame of reference for all of these things and so those interpretations can be muddied by your own sentiment or by other people's sentiment I have a crazy idea what if your personal gnosis your absolute unverifiable to anyone else but deep in your heart soul conviction is that you have to tell everyone else that their gnosis are wrong then you're just a dick. <laughs> Thank you. Well, remember okay. earlier when it's been said a couple times a couple different ways, so I'm going to paraphrase it. Your personal gnosis or intuition might not necessarily be there for your benefit. Perhaps you're simply the honing stone that someone else needs to harden their beliefs. You know, Joe, I, I do do work with Coyote, and I... Um, I can relate to that quite well. That reminds so. me. I should apologize in advance. That reminds me of one line from a Dead Kennedys song. The <laughs> line is, "The line is, God told me to skin you alive." Yeah, yeah that that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure Ember's Coyote very much appreciates that line. <laughs> I'm glad he's in another room right now. <laughs> Those two self seen. have camera run, and next time uh, Miles is down there. <laughs> well, I've got a fun UP, UPG that I think folks can can uh, reality test. 
Sure. That'll, that'll be fun. I, I'm describing an afterlife. It's an afterlife w- from a cold culture, so things are definitely warm, where uh, the dead go and the ancestors and people are partying all the time and drinking and carousing and there's violence every night and every day. Where am I describing? Valhalla. That's one interpretation. Okay. We don't have any Christians in the room, David. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, I have a UPG in which the Christian hell may in fact be Valhalla. <laughs> you are not That's the first excellent. person to think about this. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Christian heaven would suck. All the Christians who got it wrong wind up in a much better place. Which rather inverts them, and so heaven is in fact hell, and hell is in fact heaven if you perceive heaven as a play. Or <clears throat> um, the afterlife of bounty and promise, by whatever name you call it, might be Valhalla. That's pretty awesome, I like that. Well, oh, and, here's... And the, the reverse is true too. I mean, if you look at Niflheim, or, or Hell's Realm, it, it's cold, stagnant, even keeled. There's there's complete order because because the the worst possible thing is to be locked in is is to be locked in in stagnation and locked in ice. Right as as far as the Norse were concerned. So you see these things that that had all this promise and then they're encased in ice and they they can't move forward from where they are. Sort of. Like a, a fresh spring shoot, just completely encased in, in frost, right? So what's Christian heaven? Oh, Christian heaven is this place where ev- you never, you, you, nothing pains you. Everything is the same. You see the same people every day. It's all white and cool and calm. Well, it's kind of Niflheim without the... Zombif- zombification of corpses, and that's Jesus. So you're all set. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just thinking something along those lines, but from a slightly different language. Now let's go from the Christian perspective for a moment. Now Christians are pretty big on, well, not living. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just to sum the trauma up as quickly as possible. I mean, do we have to beep to see work? No, but you can okay. if you want to. I just might. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> now, that being said, if they, their life, and their idea of the perfect life is abstaining from all, well, life, then wouldn't their perfect afterlife not have life? Right. Just and that's what hell is. Hell, hell the, the the Norse hell Niflheim is is the absence the, the true absence of of life and living. There's no fun there. Yeah, that's got me. Um, that's got me channeling the Emilian Sam Kinison. <laughs> I'll explain. Um, so people in the north uh, um, view their unpleasant afterlife. These people who live where it's cold and dank and horrible, view their unpleasant afterlife as a place where it's even more cold and dank and horrible and miserable, and their pleasant afterlife as a place where it's warm and fun. These channeling Sam Kinison bit comes in where he's talking about sending food to starving people in Ethiopia, if you remember this bit, his line is, Hey, look, people, you see this? This is sand. Nothing grows on sand. Nothing ever grows on sand. Guys, don't send them food. Send them luggage. Hey, people, move to where the food is. <laughs> right? If their if they're personal... If their personal idea of the negative afterlife is exactly the same thing they're living in, just only more so, they should go to where the good stuff is. But that would be... 
wow, I was trying to <laughs> be sarcastic, and I just sort of shocked myself. <laughs> <laughs> a scurvy chasm. <laughs> I mean, I would say I'd be like using your brain or common sense, but the common sense is so rare, it should be a superpower. I mean, I've read that in too many places. Uh, Can that be my comic book superpower, the amazing ability of common sense? Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, let's send them luggage. <laughs> Or how actually, about give them governmental infrastructure so they don't have to leave? But that's actually, a whole no, let's send them boats. Again. Oh, no. Let's send them boats. Land's in a little bit of shortage, but there's plenty of food out at sea. So we'll send them fishing boats. <laughs> Be self-sufficient. Oh, no. Now you're getting way too close to that old axiom about teaching somebody how to fish. I'm not sure if I'm oh, with that. Wait, wait, They wait. can learn by trying. I'm not that motivated. A crazy realization. Okay. Um, they live in sand, and they live where it's bleak and flat and miserable and hot all the time. This is about Ethiopians now, not the Norse. Um, <laughs> ah, right. Um, and they don't have a pleasant frame of reference of where they are. So we should send them to the Nevada Flats where Burning Man takes place. They can have the hot and the flat and the sandy, but they can have a roaring good time while they're at it. So you're saying that Burning Man is really hell. <laughs> <laughs> and we should all go burning, 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 burning Man is the Burning Man is the inverse hell. Now, I'm pretty sure Inverse Hell is fishing on a crab boat in Alaska in February. <laughs> or it might just be Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> well, so or it might just what, be Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, if, with going with what Dave said, does that mean going to Winnipeg, Canada in December is going to purgatory? <laughs> hey, we are still leaving Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, it's still a step up. <laughs> What is the benevolent... for my wedding? What is the... speaking of Pennsylvania? Then what is the benevolent afterlife of the Amish? Go out Pointless. Look, <laughs> 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 look, people, millions and millions of barns to raise. Hi, <laughs> Ben. Knocking them over once in a while. <laughs> The point at which your life gets so bleak that heaven becomes becomes an atheist stream because it doesn't exist. Oh wow! Hang on, I think I think Eric's talking about the afterlife of Event Horizon. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> what is the point at which all things become a singularity? No, this is this is way too highbrow for me at this point. It's also getting a long way from talking about UPGs, aren't we? <laughs> hey, I thought I was the ADD one. <laughs> so I if you I'm have a UPG about the afterlife being a giant black hole, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and and miles at pagancenterpodcast.com. Thank you, yes, exactly. I think the UPG would have to... Who's that going now? Sandy. Sandy. I am? Yep. Apparently. Oh. Better? Maybe. Be. Kind of. Better? No. No? <laughs> no. Uh. Wait. Yes. Echo. There is no echo. Okay, good. Okay, in that case, let's turn this around and quit talking about the... Amish event horizon the of Amish. divinity and the unknowable. <laughs> the Amish, and you said was talking the Amish about it's totally on topic for the Pagan Centered Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's other favorite topic, for Ken. Hey, we're not down there yet. And I might just push that off until the other kid episodes. That's why I'm having so much fun with UPG. So let's go up a little bit. Traditions that embrace UPG. And as a Wicked, I don't really like. I don't really see UPG being embraced into the religion itself. 
but we're quite the eclectic bunch, so you kind of just assume it's just a person's personal beliefs anyway. Well, in that case, does embrace mean make one with the liturgy and the foundation of the faith? Or does embrace simply mean to respect and appreciate the fact that other people have them? I would say it's a little bit in between. Like, not just that you're respecting that people have UPGs, and not quite to the extent that it is integrated into the core foundation of the religion, but just a set of secondary practices that are kind of piled on top, but it is very clear that these are just piled on top and not officially part of the religion. Yeah, as, as long as you have that that disclaimer, you know, I usually go, boop, 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 UPG disclaimer, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> as long as you have that, as, as long as you clearly define what it is that you're saying and not intent unintentionally or intentionally lump yourself into somebody else's faith, then I'm okay with that. It's, it's when it, people try and glom on to a belief system just because they want a, a label that they, that they can throw around that I get that I'm no longer okay with that. I, I, I want them to be more clear and simply say what they are and what they do and, and not try and use somebody else's, you know, foundation as their own simply to get a platform to talk about what it is that they think. Now you have me channeling a they might be giants line. I do this a lot. The, the line in this case is... Everybody wants a rock to wind a piece of string around. Love that song. Me too. Mm. Yep. You know what it means, Heather? <laughs> yeah, and let's keep in mind too. This also entire tradition, uh, entire traditions are based off of UPGs, like uh, fairy witchcraft, for example. I was thinking more along the lines of of voodoo. Um, and and some of those vote, vote on practitioners who kind of lump everything in and and make it part of their core stuff. I know the more that I get into the native stuff, there's definitely a lot of not set things where it is there is no ifs ands or buts, but this is the way. But there's general, but it's also known that. If you experience something and it's it's honest and true that there's something to it, so I think it's safe to say that UPGs are a intrinsic part of that culture. I was told by a wonderful woman who was uh, a practicing Lakota that basically said, you know, where would Sitting Bull be if nobody listened to the fact that he had visions? Where would Crazy Horse be if nobody listened to the fact that they had visions? So, you know, what's to say that your vision's any less relevant? So I would say that they would definitely embrace UPGs. Well, even... Um I hate to bring it back to, to Christianity, but even even the the Christians have uh, you know seers and saints and and you know specific people who ha- who do have visions and do get you know direct phone lines to to you know something. So I mean, it's kind of you know e- e- even the most uh, uh, most liturgical of religions kind of um, do make exceptions to the rule. If you really look at it, though, all religions, like, we're talking one, this little one over here is built on UPG, like the fairy trad, all religions have been built on a basis of UPG at some point or another. Yes, they have. Um, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? Yeah, but there's also some, there's also some UPGs that, like, really get people, you know, kicked out of things, you know, like, like, oh. you know, uh, Joseph Smith and what he was doing. Um, 
if legends you go, are based on you. Well, if you go to a big enough point with UPG, a new religion can be born, is what you're saying. And, and born what? around the idea of magical underpants, too. UPG is the exception that makes the rule. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is... That every religion is based on a UPG, because if it's something that you believe in but cannot fundamentally prove, then you have to have faith in the existence of that thing. Um, I could have a UPG, for example, that trees exist. I don't need to imagine that trees exist. I know they do. I can walk up, I can feel a tree's branch and its leaves, and I can tell other people, see that, that's a tree, and they'll say yes. There's no need for faith in the existence of trees. There is the need for faith in the existence of things we cannot fundamentally perceive, and religion, taking the definition out of... Um, uh, hang on. If I... Ex- Track the word religion from its definition of a series of rituals and practices to, to define worship. And if I plug in the definition of religion as belief in a god or spirits or things like that, UPGs f- are a foundation of religion because you cannot verifiably, fundamentally, in a laboratory, prove that Jesus Christ, Ganesha, Apollo, whoever, exist. We believe that they do. We have faith that they do. We have huge wars and arguments and debates over the existence of which God might be better than the other, but it comes down to to fundamentally undefinable faith. So, UPG is the foundation of metaphysical religious belief. I'm holding up a lighter. Wow. <laughs> I that, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> More of that. <laughs> and he's cute, too. <laughs> Now, if that's the case, though, when when does when or can UPG go too far? When you're being an ass about it. When you stop questioning. When you've gone beyond the lore. When you try to convince others that your UPG is right. Well, I'm just going to talk on uh, David's uh, word there. Gone beyond the lore. Now, I can even see how how strict. Uh, and uh, steadfast our own lore is, how good our lore is compared to the average. Our lore was written down by Christians. And it was changed. They're changed by Christians. So, is lore 100%? No. You have to be able to play with it. To a point, it's too far. But you have to come to that point. Well, I, I would say, I, I would say my my dividing line. I, I'm I'm willing to be very egalitarian on other people's points of view because they're theirs, and I I have no business in somebody else's brain. You know, I wouldn't want somebody else in mine telling me how or what I think. You know, it's 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 that same. Uh, Reaction, negative reaction I have when, say, I, I see uh, a parent with a ill-mannered child in a in a store, and the kid falls and hurts themselves. And the as much as I want to be angry at the both the parent and the kid for for not acting well and letting the kid get hurt, I immediately have a horrible reaction to parents who say, "Oh, it's okay, you're not hurt." Well, clearly. The parent's not the one who who fell down or what have you. It's the child, and the child's experience is that they are hurt. And uh, so I, I have a innate want a need to acknowledge that other people's point of view and other people's experience is uniquely their own. 
at the same time, the there there has to be a, a point where you say enough is enough. For me, the dividing line is if your UPG negatively negatively affects yourself or others emotionally, physically, or spiritually, then that UPG has gone too far. And if it has become a negative influence, then there's a, there's a problem. There's a big problem. Applause. And that is not willing to say you lastly. Applause. You know, people can't hear you clap. <laughs> what? Well, I, I, I got a beef on that, actually. Clapping? Mm-hmm. I, I, my, my two cents is it, it's not so much the, the impact as much as um, when when somebody says, okay, uh, Thor, it says in the lore, you know, Thor, red beard. He's got a red beard. It says that various different points. It's pretty much part of his, of, of what he is. And so for someone to say, well, he doesn't have a red beard, that's what I mean when I say beyond the lore. There's a whole universe of other things that one could say, okay, well, Thor's got a long beard. Well, it's a short beard. It's a, you know, it, it's, you know, not exactly huge, uh, you know, items of, of impressive spirituality, but that's the kind of stuff that's UPG land that folks can go, you know, go make statements about, and it really isn't going to, uh, you know, be a boggle in my bonnet. Right, but, for- but, but saying, be- I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you off for a second there. When, when you say gone beyond the lore, that's a, it's sort of like saying there be dragons, right? It's not clearly defined enough. I've got no problem with the statement in and of itself, but. It, that's it, why I clarified it, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still not, but it, but it, I, I think even, even your statement, well, if somebody tries to tell me that Thor's beard isn't red because we know from the lore that it is, well, that no longer becomes a, a, a concept of UPG because there's a verifiable, we can fact check that. Right. So there, there is no UPG involved. There is a yes or a no answer to that question. Agreed. I think as far as that goes, just to, to poke at it a bit, to me, it's also compartmentalizing the gods and saying that they will only appear in that lore as they choose to, that they will not choose to perhaps to convey themselves differently to somebody else because it fits better in their head or for whatever reason that they choose to, that they will never do that because it's written down here that they won't. Well, then there needs to be a qualification. If, if, if that being the case, then somebody needs to qualify that. I know in the lore it says blah, blah, blah. However, for me, dot, dot, dot. There you go. Those, those statements need to be there. There needs to be some acknowledgement that this is not, this is, this is not the, the, the average concept. And you shouldn't go around spouting your own personal belief as if it is a part of a dogma or, or part of a lore. Because if it can be fact-checked by somebody, then at some point... Somebody's going to call you on that, and you're not going to have any defense because you haven't pre- you haven't prefaced, your, prefaced yourself. It's just, but that's just bad homework. That's just bad, you know, research. You could fall back on the on the kind of the thing that archaeologists use. You never ever say we know, for, especially the further back in time you go. You never ever say we know for a fact that this is why they did such and such. You always, unless you're a total idiot and you want beer bottles thrown at you or you want to lose your grant, say, we believe this is why they were doing this or we believe, that we think this is what significance this object may have had. Because, you, especially again, the further back in time you go, you can't say 100% without fail that for all of the, and, and especially when you consider that you may be looking at a thousand years of variation here, where a tool might have started out being for one thing and gotten morphed and evolved and used for something, you know, for another technology, you can't say, boom, ironclad, set in stone, this is it. And to me, there, there are people that for, that refer to that as being a weasel word or a weasel approach. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a use of a weasel word. I think it's just 
aiming to admit that there's always going to be there's always going to be sort of a gray area there that you can't nail down and set in stone. Well, uh, well, true, uh, and and there's a, I think there's a middle there's a there's a middle ground between saying it, it it absolutely must be X, and you can never ever ever state something as a as a as a fact there. I, I think there's a, enough of a body of intelligent discourse, modern intelligent discourse at this point, that you can say on, on a lot of different faiths, that you, that you can say, well, as far as we know, this, this is the, you know, this is the, this is the concept, this is the way that they went, and this is what they did, and there's, this is the reason why. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's... There needs to be some leeway in that, and I don't think that that is UPG. I think that is just ongoing, intelligent research by really smart people. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it myself, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna accept that. But to to get back to my my original question, I, I really am wondering what is it that what is it that that bridges that that gap between UPG and off the off the charts. How, I mean, I mean, for me, it's it, for me. It's uh, like I said, it, it's clear, but I, I'm I'm not certain for for people like the like the like the fairy faith. I, I have no idea. I have no idea where they're coming from. So for a group like that. Where do they call the the dividing line? Is there one? We're talking about uh, groups that are really including and accepting of UPG. Would that be a foundation for a group that's in inclusive of that? I and, think what it comes down that? to is, is it inhibiting your ability to function in society? And that does not mean, do you belong in the norm or do you get along with, you know, the average Joe over there? But it's, can you have a conversation? Can you go to work and, and work properly and interact with the people? Can you have a family life? Can you maintain friendships? That does not mean that you have to have 50 million of them. It doesn't mean that you have to be ordered with everybody. But can you be a functioning member of society in some way shape or form if you cannot be a a good functioning member of society there's something wrong and to back up what amber said we you know i don't think amber would be saying that unless we have seen many 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 people that fall into that category where they let yeah. upg take over their lives then they lose their yeah. ability to function as a human being well, I, I think we've all seen that. I, I think we've all seen these these horribly damaged people that are that are really looking for for a place to belong, and then all of these other things sort of drive them into a place where they they're completely non functioning. And and my con my concern about allowance or non allowance of of UPG and how do you mitigate that those factors is really figuring out as a I, I don't even know how to put it as a I I, I mean I, I'm going to use the word community because I don't know any other way to, to talk about it but how do we as a community focus those people into the places that that are going to be healthy for them and keep those people that would would be like we were talking about earlier those those cult leader like people who are going to prey on uninformed, Damaged or and or damaged people. I mean, well, there's there's a twofold solution. One is make sure people are educated enough to question everything they hear, so that there's less prey available for the taking. But <clears throat> as far as you know, how far should we let people go with their UPGs? Uh, aside from the whole functioning aspect, there's also that laughability factor but again you know if you believe it you believe it and there's nothing anybody going to do about it but usually a, a side indicator of how healthy a person is with regards to their UPG is how much they're trying to get everybody else to be on board with it 
and, and as was alluded to a couple hours ago by Snooze, is usually the best attitude to have is the I don't care if other people believe it, I'm just putting it out there. And I found the most unhealthy people you know, that, that, that are unhealthy when it comes to how they deal with UPGs are the ones most forceful in trying to convince others that their UPGs are reality. If you so, want a con, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go. Okay. Well, you're probably going to say the same thing. I'm going to give, if going by the the text messages. If you actually really for the for my money, considering that I am as kind of far out in the field and I'm as an eclectic weirdo as I am, my I, I shove Bonewitz cult evaluation danger frame in everybody's face that will listen, because it's not just for groups. You can use it to examine an individual person's motives and interaction and effect on themselves and the people around them. And ju- just for a simple screwdriver hammer type simple tool for at least getting people to consider the possibility that no, not everything out there is healthy or good for you. And there's a difference between struggle and trial and adversity that makes you grow and crapping in your own sandbox or cutting off your own nose or worse it's just for sure getting people to think about the fact that okay there might be some venomous snakes out here that i probably shouldn't pick up that it, it's 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 invaluable i've i've never the only the only people i've ever shown it to and discussed it with that reacted really horribly adversely to it were people that I suspected of being people that would be de- that would be pinpointed by some of the parameters in it. Yeah. I, I was just going to say in a more general fashion, uh, look to the wholeness of the person. If the person who is spouting this it doesn't, doesn't live a whole lifestyle that is a healthy lifestyle, is a generally scary individual of, or of sketchy nature, you know, something along those lines then you need to take that into account. Uh, because if, if folks are, you know, living uh, crazy lifestyles, that really is not a good center to be making any sort of determination where other people should be thinking about their spiritual well-being. Especially if they're trying to suck you into their crazy. And it, that's touching on something, you know, that you were talking about a minute ago. I consider that to be the, in addition to the when has the UPG gone too far, um, in addition to what you were saying earlier, the thing about that it seems to me that you're right, people that are unbalanced or unhinged in a bad way seem to want to pull other people in with them because they have no stable, they don't have any stability, they don't have a center point or still point to work from and it's like they're trying to pull other people in to stand on to borrow, to create some type of stability but it's not going to happen. That was rambly. I'm sorry. No, there's, okay. a, there's a point I wanted to have discussed. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't think that, that was rambly, and I, I I agree with you. You know, you, the sorry. Scary God. people are scary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and and is is it? Uh, I, I I I I can laugh about it, and you can say, oh, well, it's it's good to be in sort of an, an elite group who's been around for a while, you know, but. It, with with that thought also comes the idea to me anyway that especially unfortunately as I get a little bit older the the idea that you really have to start looking out for those people who and, and pointing them like you said to the to the right tools of critical thought so that they can think for themselves and, and make sure that they don't get involved with people that are just really go off the deep end and are, are dangerous so that there's there's less prey to be had almost. It's kind of sad that we're talking about UPG and what we wind up with is UPG as a weapon almost or as a tool. Yeah. It's my, my way of doing that 
that the other way that I refer people to is in itself another UPG. I I tend to evaluate people on the way they strike my gut and one of the ways that I phrase that is that they smell a certain way and that's not 100% accurate but it's the best way I can translate it for the five senses that I have and the fact that you know I'm, I'm a person walking around sometimes using what feels like an animal's brain I have people that I encounter that just plain smell sick or wrong. Uh, sometimes I refer to it as they smell like rabies. And yeah. that, well, <laughs> you know, yeah, but it, it does kind of fit, especially when you consider that rabies is a illness that can be contracted through, and it's not necessarily one's intrinsic fault or anything. It's just a condition. Uh, so you know, there's sometimes there's a sometimes people want to play a blame game with that kind of thing, and it's not always you know accurate or productive. But I tell people, listen to your gut, because my gut doesn't lie to me. Sometimes it takes me a little while to figure out what it's trying to tell me, but it doesn't lie to me. And again, that could be considered living completely UP off of a UPG, but so far it's a UPG that's worked for me. And that's one of the things that I, you know, if you're going to hand somebody a tool and say, okay, this is something that you can think about, that one's good for my money. One of these days, Snooze, I will learn to listen to my gut. (laughs) Because it hasn't been wrong yet. (laughs) And one of these days, I should just learn to pay attention. There, There are plenty of times when... If my gut is confusing me and I can't quite figure it out, I would have no problem whatsoever asking you what you thought my gut meant, okay? (laughs) Well, the sad part is that there are a lot of damaged people who don't have a good understanding or or discretion and and make poor choices so that they do not have a gut that one should rely on, unfortunately. Well, some, it's... The more that, yeah, I think that this is part of the reason that I get along with the PCP crew is that it takes a certain level of introspection to be able to tell the difference between what is emotional need and what is gut feeling. And it's hard, even if you've done it for years and even if you are a, a well-seasoned individual, that's still something that's difficult and if you have somebody of a low emotional intelligence or a low social intelligence they you know they act they act in social situations like a 12 year old and they don't have that gut instinct because they don't understand it true I make jokes that one of the reasons that I say I was born a crone is because I've just, it's always just been there and it's, you know, it's not something that I had to teach myself or learn how to do. I kind of just fell into it. Mm-hmm. The one thing, um, Dave, you had said earlier about, you know, if they live a weird lifestyle. Just to, just to clarify a bit, because it's been bugging the back of my head, it, it's not necessarily to say that they live outside the social norms, because there are wonderfully enlightened people that decide that they just want to wander the woods and, and go on foot, and they just travel places and live in campgrounds. But they're still... Is their lifestyle extreme? Yeah, it's kind of out there. There's some really... <laughs> really interesting people out there, but they're still functioning. They are not delusionally happy, but they're very content people. Here's and they're, a, they're there you go. Here's a heuristic I use in my daily life. And more or less it goes like this. If myself and somebody else see something, okay, and you see He's, some of us are more aware to people in my daily life than I like to admit, but 
if myself and somebody else see something and we are asked to describe it, is it going to be kind of sort of the same? That is my definition of sanity. Well, true, and also people who choose to, to go out and wander in the woods aren't harming themselves or others either. I look at it this way. Every choice you make has lots of ramifications, and if they decide they're going to get maximum enjoyment out of their life by wandering through woods, yeah, there's probably some trade-offs, but that don't sound too bad. I've thought about it once or twice. Well, I mean, my, my point was kind of that there are definitely a lot of people that if, even now, if you say, oh, I'm going tent camping, what's wrong with you? Don't you know that there are, are ticks out there, and there are spiders out there, and there's poison ivy out there, and, and there's no air conditioning, and you can get heat stroke, and they're, they have all of this worry because to them, that's putting yourself in danger. If you drive an automobile, you put yourself in danger. I know this, love. <laughs> it was in an RV with scurvy. You might not be <laughs> It was just kind of saying, like, if their lifestyle, you know, if the first time you see them, their lifestyle brushes you off as strange and unusual, unusual. Take it with a, a grain of salt and look at it a little bit. Like, Dave Karen has a very, very, very good point. I just wanted to temper it just a little bit. Well, I have people that think I need to be locked up and, you know, put in some kind of a therapy or whatever for some of the crap I come up with. My, my usual two cents on that is, the first of all, the standard disclaimer. If you actually have the presence of mind to ask yourself if you're crazy, then you're probably not. Second of all, if I'm if the only person that is affected by the way I do things is me, it doesn't really matter whether I'm crazy or not. Now, if I start dragging other people into my crazy with me and, you know, okay, beyond making people go sit in the corner in the kitchen, not talk to anybody else and stare at this weird dead thing, <laughs> beyond... If I'm well, affecting if I'm affecting people outside my sphere in an adverse fashion, you know, yeah, there you go. But people that elect to go walk around in the woods and be hermits are not affecting anything other than themselves. If I go camping and some and yes, I do have a cousin that thinks that that's not only she thinks it should be criminal negligence to take if someone takes their children camping, um, then yeah, she thinks I'm nuts and I need therapy or whatever. But as long as I'm not forcing her to come camping with me, Bupkus. Do people still use that word? Uh, it's I do. used on uh, NPR. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. That works for me. Now, and, and see, that comes back to that, that. To me, that says that you, you, in a way, agree with with my sentiment of you should not you. The the dividing line for any of this is: Are you harming somebody else? Are you putting somebody else in harm's way? And are you putting yourself in harm's way? And when I say harm's way, I don't. I, I mean beyond the pale of, of acceptable risk, right? So driving a car is acceptable risk. Deciding to take a walk out on the highway, probably not acceptable risk. Um, there are some school districts that would beg to differ with you. <laughs> <laughs> Depends yeah, on the Pennsylvania. Actually, they're, they're, they're all over the place. You read about that every once in a while. Frederick County is that way. Dude, I'm living in NASCAR Central. I'm not even going to get started on that one. But the the analogy is sound, even if localized application might not be. <laughs> we, got too, we got too many freaking St. Dale wannabes around here for me to go there. <laughs> Hell, Dale! I'm thinking no. of Here's now I got to repress. <laughs> here's my here's my heuristic when um I, I got some intuition. One, if I listen to it, is am I going is it going to cause anything more than me looking like a little bit of an ass? If the answer is no, I'll probably go ahead with it. Yeah, because 
and and there it is. It's, it's when other it's it's when you try and drag other people like you like you said, snooze. When you try and drag other people into your crazy, and that crazy is harmful. That there is a problem, and the, and UPGs need to stop when they get to that point. I'm give, I will give latitude to people who you know want to take the you know take the the Edda and the sagas and and run with them to their own to their own devices. I, I really will. It's not for me. I may cringe or you know grumble under my breath, but in the end. It's not for me to make to make those distinctions for them. It is for me to make those distinctions, and I feel I need to speak up when there are people that are taking those the viewpoints that they have and using them to coerce other people into dangerous situations or put themselves into seriously harmful situations. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Another Actually, point. Oh, go ahead. Continue. A, a point that I'd just like to bring up. I don't really, not sure if it was covered yet or not. Is that there are some people who every single thing in life becomes a UPG, and I think that's something that can be pretty unhealthy as well. Or not necessarily a UPG, but a message, a gift, or whatever. The thunder, it spoke to me. It told me to go outside and like Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, well, and that's when you that's when you get into the to the the section of of my commentary where where you know, it it may not be physically or spiritually harmful, but it certainly is emotionally or mentally harmful to con- consistently live in a, a delusional state, right? Isn't that schizophrenia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, at least borderline. To, to a much lesser degree, I, I just call that special snowflake syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dave, we went to, we were in Clarion. We had the, I don't know if you remember her when she did this, but we had a girl who, I think something is telling me to get a Coke from the Coke machine. I wasn't oh there for God. that. But I remember when <laughs> Satan I was changing the those. color of her room to fuchsia. <laughs> <laughs> completely ignore the fact that you know the sunlight would come through and the sun set and hit her room and change it to fuchsia it was obviously some big metaphysical power and her empathy would cause her to get cokes from the coke machine or I think it's telling me I need a sprite today and it would be you know like Adam said every little thing had to be a, a message from something and it was the most ridiculous thing ever. Oh God! I ran into one of those one time. It's like one of those if you if you drop your pencil on the ground, there is huge cosmic significance, and the universe and your karma are trying to tell you something. I said, "Yeah, they're trying to tell me gravity works, and I'm clumsy." <laughs> it's God. Meanwhile, yeah. everything that's going through their brain is pew 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 pew. <laughs> pew. <laughs> I mean, I got, tell me that's not a good summary. <laughs> I got one better. I, I was in a internet chat room. One of those, uh, those the internet, uh, the bastion of sanity and sane <laughs> conduct. Oh yeah, exactly. And there was a whole back and forth, you know, troll war. And one guy was like, "Wait, wait, let's bring Forsetti into this." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, we're, we're not going to be invoking gods of of peace, love, and granola to a friggin' internet argument." Please stop demeaning my gods. They are universal, you know, major uber concepts. And to bring them into a stupid flame war is retarded. Thank you. Gods Don't need to that. laugh, too. Wait a minute. That's what they got UPGs in the weak world for. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Amber, I got a link for you later. Oh, no. I've learned don't click his link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scurry is You're still looking like he's still afraid every time we meet a heathen that like somehow they're going to get even with him for that that <laughs> yeah that, that whole thing. That's not UPG. That's evidence. <laughs> I, I, I've accepted that one day I'm going to get my head amputated by a hammer. It's all good. <laughs> You'll never know what hits you. <laughs> It's hammer time. 
Oh, God. Okay, moving oh, beyond the Oz of Tree jokes. <laughs> Hold your hand out so I can slap you for that. <laughs> All those opposed to gratuitous violence, please turn their heads. Oh, uh, Dave's on a quest to... Dave's on a quest to inspire me to drive to uh, Texas. Yes, I am. Yeah. Don't worry. I know his RV doesn't have an alternator. And he only has so many batteries. <laughs> you know, usually I bring things up and people fix them. I think this is like a... A discouragement thing with you, Scary. Every time I bring up the alternator, it just like gets postponed further. <laughs> no, I just, Sorry, uh, Scurvy, just... When you come to visit me, I'll make you a necklace that you don't like again. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> no, just make a I'm, necklace out of the alternator. Mostly, I'm just waiting for my brother and I to get free time on the same day to take it down to my dad's to work on. I mean, no offense, but I've got this phobia about working on vehicles alongside of the road. Yeah, I don't blame you, especially that road. Yeah. So. And all the other kin topics are completely irrelevant since we already discussed all of that outside of that context. Uh, <laughs> <Okay. hi. laughs> and by the way, you will note that is a new chunk of guardrail there. Yes, I did notice that. We should yes. have got that on film. Oh, I already got film of that. Okay. We should put that in the film. Uh, one of those episodes, you know, where we got five, no, 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 we got 13 hours of audio with no accompanying video because <laughs> somebody doesn't have a fucking alternator. <laughs> hey, if it means anything to you, when we got down there, the Napa Auto Parts store tested it and said it was good. Yeah, because when I need an auto parts place, I need to trust, I trust Napa. <laughs> Why did this become a paid advertisement? <laughs> against Napa? <laughs> Do you want incompetent car care? Go to Napa! <laughs> well, hey, our Napa guy is usually really good, but he's our neighbor. So I trust him. Okay, okay. My experiences with Napa have not been good, ever. Uh, when it comes to auto parts, um, <laughs> normally I'm under the philosophy if I have to test the alternator, just replace it. Does anybody that else was... have any uh, personal doses about Autobots before we move on? <laughs> <laughs> Don't Sorry, ask me that, that, that question. Dave, <laughs> you should Normally never have to ask me questions that you really don't want the answers to. <laughs> Normally, it's a matter of if, for auto maintenance, if I've, elim if I've eliminated a battery and I know it's not the wiring and I'm looking at the alternate, just replace it. Eliminated the battery? You've got like four batteries hooked up to that thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, Dave. Well, and for those of you at home that are trying to physically work this out in your head, like, how do you fit four batteries under the hood of that tiny vehicle? We ran wires inside. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 getting back to UPGs, we, we discussed unverified, we discussed personal. We're going to leave the definition of gnosis to someone that actually knows a lot more about the subject. Uh, actually, Dave, didn't you have a... Uh... Uh, UPG and <laughs> We're not going there. <laughs> We're not going into that UPG on air, okay? That was, that was, no. Coward! <laughs> we'll go into that in after hours. We're, we're just about done here. We'll be done in ten minutes. Oh. This will be the after hours after you stop hitting the record button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want that yeah. blackmail. Um... So, so if you want to know more about gnosis and the depth of gnosis and all that fun baggage that comes with that word, uh, you can listen to Secrets in Plain Sight, episode 252, Knowing Gnosis. And now we're going to go into final thoughts. We have to think. My final thought is beware who you tell your UPGs to. They may use it as blackmail. <laughs> No examples in the group or anything. No, that no, no. We're hit. all examples after we hit the stop record button. No! <laughs> oh. My uh, okay. final thought is, it took me a year to figure out what UPG stood for. Everyone always just said UPG. My final thought is, UPGs does not mean to leave your brain on the desk. Use the brain... Use what skills you've got to 
evaluate what you're looking at and never leave your uh, doubting Thomas behind. My final thought is Dave really needs to antagonize me when I got like seven days off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm still needing one more person for PNC Texas. I don't think NASA will hire me. <laughs> I think they're downsizing right now. No, no, that's only with contractors. <laughs> My up, final oh. thought is use your UPGs for good, not evil. Aww. <laughs> Damn, it's <man>. fun. <laughs> I'll never get anything done. <laughs> My final thought is that UPG can also be interpreted to stand for your personal ghosts. <laughs> I don't really have that much of a final thought this week. I'm kind of fried. Okay. Amber's okay. kind of fried. That's her final thought. <laughs> Amanda, I know you said so much this episode. Did you want to have a final thought? Sure. Um, trust your instincts with a lot of these things. A lot of people for um, question themselves and what's going on too much. You know, sometimes what's in front of you really is in front of you. Is that everyone? Did we get Adam? I don't really have one. Okay. You're no fun. I've been quiet this episode. Well, that doesn't... Well, so- for this recording of PCP, the Pagan Center Podcast. We'll be gone next week. So join us the week after that where we're talking about something. Check out the <laughs> Facebook group at facebook.com slash PCP podcast to figure out what the hell that something is. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Okay, recording is now ending. Yay, something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do we really want to know what my UPG was? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. So, 